Welcome back, everybody. Now, today I'm going to look at five car gadgets, four of them from Amazon. One of them was sent to me unsolicited. Let's see how they really work in today's video. Let's get started with the noggle. This is a basically a tube that attaches over your air conditioning vent. It runs in the back seat and it's advertises for kids. Why is it only for kids? Can't adults get hot in the back seat too? But it says um, making the back seat cool again. So you hook, hook it over your vent, it goes to the back and you got kind of a direct line of air going back there. So I think I paid 45 bucks for this. It's not, it's not cheap. And it just seems like it's a big tube. Most of their designs are very childlike looking. So I try to get the least childlike looking one that I could because I think adults would want this too, especially out here in the desert. Now they say on the back that it installs in less than 30 seconds. And when I was reading the Amazon comments, most of the complaints were for the installation. So there's kind of a divide there. Is it easy or is it not easy? I'm going to find out right now. Oh, we got, we got a lot of tube going on here. A couple of high tech zip ties here. They say 30 seconds. I've noticed a lot of products, the more they tout how easy it is to install, the harder it is to install. It's like they're trying to like make you think there's something wrong with it with you rather the installation. Maybe I'm just cynical, I don't know. Step one, find fastener and fold the tip. I'm getting right to it. So here we go. That's step one, fold the tip. Uh, it's very confusing. Step one, they have a black fastener. And step two, they have a white fastener. I thought I was missing something. I'm like, where's the white fastener? I only have the black one. They want you to stick it in there like this and then, oh yeah. All right. Well that, Hey, that worked. Okay. I think you're supposed to put this against there. How am I going to get this off of here? 30 seconds, huh? 30 seconds. My 30 seconds have been up for about three minutes. Make sure to get a good secure fit, but if installed too tightly it can cause damage to the vent grill. Oh great. I'm going to damage my car. Well, here's the two ends. Oh, I keep hitting my hazards. I mean, that's not real tight. They say don't put it too tight, but don't put it too loose. How are you supposed to know which is which? The only thing I can do is take this back in the back seat and see if I can get some air back there. If not, I might have to keep adjusting this until I get it right. That was not 30 seconds though. That was a lot more than 30 seconds. Time to put my noggle in my face, whatever that means. Yeah, I don't feel anything. I literally feel nothing at all. Nothing, nothing. I can hear the air conditioner running. I don't feel it. Let me go crank it and see what happens. I hear it. I don't feel it. I'm going to see if I can get a better seal around the, the vent because I'm not feeling anything at all. Nothing. Take three. All right. I feel like I was able to get a much better seal around there. I mean, I kind of feel it. It's not very strong, but I feel it. All right. Let me show you what I got here. Here's, here's my problem. First, problem number one, I keep, I keep turning the hazards on every time I do anything to adjust it. Problem number two, the center of these vents is where the adjustment's at. So you have to put it off center or you're going to keep moving this back and forth, in which case it closes the vent. So right now I'm trying to navigate between the tab on the vent and my hazard light button, which is not going well. If I push it all the way left, I close the vent. If I push it to the right, it's right in the way of my hazard button. It turns them on. But the vent is fully open. Let me try it now. All right. If this doesn't work, I'm going to call it a bust. The actual tube itself is cold. Oh, I feel, oh, I definitely feel it. Oh, I definitely feel it now. Oh, wow. Actually, the difference between now and when I first used it, it was almost nothing before. Now it's actually quite nice. It actually works. I'm, sh I'm actually shocked. The first couple tries were pretty bad. The only problem is this in my car, it's not in a good spot. I can't leave it there. It's going to keep turning my hazards on when I'm driving around. So I'm going to have to finagle it to get it in the right spot. I do think this would be good for like infants that are rear facing. Definitely good for them. If you don't have vents in the backseat of your car, I think adults might like this. I'm going to probably leave this in my car because in the summertime when I have people back here, they roast. I feel bad for them. Not, I'm not fond of the name. I think it should be marketed to kids and adults. And I'm not real fond of the mounting system. It feels like I don't know what the better solution is, but there's gotta be a better solution than that because that's not ideal. I can't, I gotta give them credit. It does, it does do what it says it's going to do. It blows cold air from the front, right to your face in the back. Now is this tube worth 45 bucks? I don't know. It's kind of steep. That's kind of steep for this. All right. So that's item number one. I'm happy about that. Now the next three items I actually filmed a couple days ago. So let me flash back to that. And I have one more item after that, and then we'll wrap it up with some bonus content. 
So right now I've got kind of a collection of three things I'm going to use all at the same time. And the first of those is this Amazon's Choice. I don't know what they call it. I guess you'd call it a car console extender. Uh, this fits between the seats and it gives you two cup holders and a little bit of storage space here, which is kind of a cool idea. Now, currently I already have something in between my seats right now. And that is the Catch Caddy. And wow, it, it does catch stuff. I'm looking inside here right now. It got a straw, a french fry, a bunch of crumbs, a quarter, some dental floss, a peanut. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's not good in there. I gotta empty that thing out. Ugh. Let's put this in, in place and see how it looks. All right, well, it does, it does slide in there. It does seem to fit and it does hold my drink. I worry about this. If I'm driving, that's not gonna be good. Of course, maybe this isn't for while you're driving, I don't know. I'm gonna put it right there right now, be rebellious. Could definitely put both of our phones in here. We have we each have a phone and that frees up two cup holders. So I'm gonna keep using this throughout the rest of the day and see how it goes. We shall, we shall see. Before I get too much further, let's check out the second item, which is the automobile swivel tray plateau. Oh no, it goes in a, it goes in a French right there. It is an automobile swivel tray. So let me uh, crack this open and see how it actually works. It sounds like there's some broken parts in it. All right, so this is, the, this is the final product. It doesn't look very big. It doesn't look very big, does it? And I'm not, I'm not sure how well it really swivels. I mean, th this one does not, honestly, admittedly, this one does not have very high of ratings on Amazon. A lot of people have complained that this part did not fit well on their cup holder, so it was kind of, it was kind of wobbly. It's kind of wobbly anyways. And is that, is it me or does this look kind of not quite straight? I don't know, but I'll make it work, I think. I like I have a plunger in my hand. All right, so it just goes in this cup holder right here. Now my cup holders have these little extenders that kind of hold things in place, so that my, the lack of size may not be a problem for me. All right, well, oh wow. I can't say it's real, it's real firm, but it, it's staying in place. I don't know if I put anything real heavy on here, like a drink. Would I put a drink on here? No way. I would not trust a drink on this. I can put something light. Like how about these half pops, which if you stick around for the end of the video, I'm gonna be opening these up and trying them out, half pops. I can put some McDonald's fries on here and I can put some McDonald's nuggets on here, but that's pretty much all the room I've got. I don't really see how it swivels. I know it's supposed to swivel, but I'm not really seeing much of a swivel feature. I think if I did swivel, it's already weak enough. It would be even weaker if I try to swivel it. So I think I'm going to leave this swivel free while I use it. There were people on Amazon doing all kinds of makeshift fixes for the, the problem with this being too small, but for me it works. So I'm just going to go with it as long as I don't swivel it. Two pieces of the puzzle here. We have, I have my console holding my drink and my phones. I've got my swivel tray. One more thing. That's right. It's this Sauce Moto dip clip. There's a two pack of these for I think a 10 or $11 on Amazon. Now for those who are hardcore dippers, this has got, got to have it, right? This is more of a ketchup container. It's reusable, we rewashable. This will hold most of the types of sauce packets out there. So let's uh, put it on the vent and try it out. That's how it clips onto the vent. Easy enough, simple design. Oh, and there we go. It feels pretty firm too. So if you've got something like my favorite sauce from McDonald's, which is the hot mustard sauce, they're supposed to fit in this way. Larger packets will fit that way. And the reusable ketchup tray will fit that way. Orange gold we have here. Sauce Moto works. Real world nugget test here. Oh yeah, it's, it feels pretty sturdy. I can definitely dip with authority and it's not going to go anywhere. You do run the risk of potentially spilling the dip on your dash, which that wouldn't be good. All right, I got this on my face here, but I'm impressed by the Sauce Moto dip clip. Very impressed by it. I'm going to try the second one, put some ketchup in there and definitely be double dipping right now. Ketchup containers in place. Let's check it out. I think it works. I think this works. Reviews for the swivel tray are a bit hit and miss. Reviews for the console are actually pretty good and reviews for the Sauce Moto dip clip are actually pretty good as well. And I can see why. The, the tray, I mean, I wouldn't be able to, look at this. All right, talking about the tray, I mean, I don't think you're gonna want this while driving. Not, not only that, but if you go to reach, I mean, it's good, you can't have this there. You can't have it while driving. I mean, I might try it while driving just to see how it works, but I don't think it's ideal. This, the console extender or whatever you call it, this might be better on the passenger seat when, when there's nobody else in the car. 
I feel a little bit cramped, but it, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, having four drink holders is actually a pretty nice thing. Usually I put my phone in, in here in the cup holder. So to have that is actually quite nice. One thing I hadn't really considered before is as I'm dipping my nuggets in the hot mustard sauce, uh, the hot mustard sauce is getting cold. It's right in front of, I have the air running because it's 93 degrees here in Las Vegas. But I have cold ketchup, which is fine, and cold hot mustard sauce, which is, I guess I'm used to at room temperature. I would say of this batch, I'm definitely a big fan of the Sauce Moto dip clip. Although I'm probably gonna keep using the console. I don't think I'm gonna keep using the tray though. It's very floppy, kind of cheaply made. I'm, it doesn't really give you a lot of extra space. So I'm just, I'm not on the swivel tray bandwagon. Sorry, swivel tray. But two of the three I like, that's pretty good, right? Kind of a, po a postscript here after I finish my lunch. One thing that's kind of funny is the tray is right in the path of my air conditioning. So these are some cold French fries now because they're getting blasted by cold air. Now, maybe if I could get it to swivel properly, I could get out of the way, but this, I'm not getting to swivel. I've been trying. That's not, it's not really swiveling. If it did, it would make an already weak tray even weaker. So I don't, I don't know. Once again, two out of three, not bad. One last thing about the sauce clips is once you're done eating, if you just use sauce in there, you're good to go still. But if you had ketchup in a reusable container, somehow you gotta clean that. You gotta clean it somehow. The console, it does work, but I'm hitting my hand when I turn. So this drink right here, if it's really a large drink, could be a problem. I'm thinking I would put this, if I was by myself, by the passenger side, not the driver's side. Now with the tray, if you had any questions whether it's for use while driving, I'm gonna say not, look at this. Probably not. It's uh, it's hanging in there, but this is not a good thing. Plus it also blocks your hand from accessing the rest of the vehicle. So that's what I've got for these three. Let's see what's next. And finally, this one was sent to me, actually twice, they sent to me twice. This is the Glare Guard. Even on the box, they say that they're an alternative, a better alternative to the HD Vision Visor, which wasn't as seen on TV products several years ago. Now, I don't have that one, but I did dig out of the box the old Battle Visor, which it's kind of dusty because it's been in a box for a while. But I figured I would make a quick comparison between the Glare Guard and the Battle Visor and see which one's better. Oh, we got a lot, of, a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. Oh, there's a, there's a personalized letter, it's, it says, from Dane Smith, it's uh, it says Mr. White on it. It's calling Mr. White, All right? It says that after looking at after seeing my video for the Tac Visor, he says this one is uh, higher quality. The bracket's stronger. It's made right in the USA. So, thank you, Mr. Smith. They do have a yellow and a gray version, and they sent me the gray version. Right. It can't be that difficult to attach a visor, I wouldn't think. Now they do give you these Velcro straps to go all the way around. I'm just gonna try clipping it on it first though. Now their instructions show it going underneath so it will flip down. All right, well that's, that's easy enough. There are these Velcro straps here, but I'm not sure I'm gonna leave this up. So I'm just gonna use it without, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be a rebel this time. So, okay, so let me see here. First time use, I gotta get situated here. All right, well, I mean, that's, maybe I should take my sunglasses off. So that's what I'm seeing. And I think it, it definitely reduces the glare. It looks pretty good, actually. Well, let me see my sunglasses. Well, they do a pretty good job of reducing the glare, too. What do you guys think? Is, is one better than the other? They're, they're kind of similar to me, actually. The Battle Visor has this kind of nifty sun blocker thing when the sun's right in your eyes, although I never really found it very useful. But there's uh, there's the Battle Visor. It has that amber tint to it, as opposed to the Glare Gar, which is a gray tint. Now, which one do you guys think is better, the sunglasses or the uh, battle visor? I got this cool car when I got my, my tech glasses that supposedly shows you if it's, if it's going to be uh, polarized or not. So let's try it with the glare guard. I think you're supposed to see it in color, which I do. I think that means that it's polarized. Woohoo! How about the battle visor? I don't think battle visor is uh, polarized. It doesn't look like it. With my glasses on, it's color also, so my glasses are polarized. As I'm looking through it without glasses on, it looks about the same is when I don't use it and I have glasses, except for the, my glasses. I think my glasses are actually a little bit lighter, so this is a little bit darker than I'm used to, which is fine, but if you already wear sunglasses while driving, I'm not sure you need a visor like this, but if you have something like prescription glasses and no prescription sunglasses, this is a good alternative for sure. Having used the TAC visor and the battle visor, 
the battle visor was better than the tech visor, but I wasn't as fond as that of that amber tint that some people like. I don't like it. I like more of a gray tint. That's why I have glasses like this. So this is more my alley as far as a visor I might use, but usually I just wear sunglasses anyways. Right now, if I put it at this angle, I can see a reflection of a light from the back. You get these kind of plasticky surfaces that reflect. It's, it's kind of built into a visor that's going to have that kind of a problem. Not a big deal, but it's certainly worth mentioning. So from what I can tell, the glare guard with minimal use is actually uh, pretty good. I like it better than the amber tint, so uh, you know, it's pretty good. I don't really use visors, but if you are looking for a visor for your car, uh, give the glare guard a, a consideration because it seems pretty good. So let me recap real quick here before I go on to some bonus material at the end. The Noggle I paid 46 bucks for. I have the 8-foot model. They have 6 and 10 feet, which are different prices obviously it has a 4.2 star rating as of this filming on amazon the glare guard which i didn't get from amazon is available on amazon it's 30 bucks and it has a 4.3 star rating there you can also go to glareguard.com to pick that up the sauce moto i paid 10 bucks for that for a two pack that one's got a 4.6 star rating on amazon the console is 20 bucks that's an amazon's choice and it has 4.4 stars and finally the swivel tray Paid 15 bucks for that one. Not an impressive 2.8 stars. And I noticed this morning, it's not even on there anymore. It says currently unavailable. I wonder what that tells you about it. So that's it. Have you guys used any of these? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles for progress pictures videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Frequent Reviews. All right, here's some bonus material here for you guys. This is a box of products called Half Pops. Now the backstory on that is when I did my Salbury popcorn popping bowl, I mentioned that I preferred the half pop kernels and someone told me there's a place that actually sells them. So I found them online, I ordered it. I have no affiliation with this company, I just ordered it like any regular consumer would. And I ordered their sampler pack that has a bunch of them and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try them right now. I'm actually quite excited about them, more than I should be. But here's what they look like. Here's a couple of them. We've got caramel and sea salt, butter and sea salt. Let's see what else we got in here. Here's an aged white cheddar. Someone on social media said they didn't, this didn't sound good. The black truffle and sea salt, we'll see. Simply sea salt. Wow, there's a, there's a lot in here. I don't know why this one's special, but you only get one of these, the angry kettle corn. Angry. I'm gonna crack these open and give them a shot right now, might as well. I'm gonna start off with the caramel and sea salt. They do look like half popped popcorn. How would you manufacture half popped popcorn? I don't understand, those are kind of like the, the, the rejects from regular popcorn, aren't they? Smells like caramel. Let's try it out. Very crunchy. I don't think I've ever had a whole mouthful of those before. That's almost overwhelming. I think I should probably eat one at a time until I get used to it. Because usually when you're digging through the bottom of the popcorn bowl, you find one at a time and you throw it in your mouth. You don't usually have a whole bunch of them. Let me try the butter and sea salt next. I'm gonna try one. Butter and sea salt. It does look like a half popped kernel. Here you go. Hmm. Much more mild. Hmm. Now this right here, this looks like a fully popped one that's maybe the reject of this batch. Whereas usually in the regular popcorn, these are the rejects. In this one, the, the regular pop popcorn are the rejects. Yeah, that was regular popcorn. Hmm. Aged white cheddar. Try one first. How do they how do they do that? Is this some sort of trickery or sorcery? There must be a trick to this. I don't know if I have a favorite yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try all of them. Simply sea salt. Is that one even half popped or is it not popped at all? I'm gonna break a tooth on this. Let's see. Oh no! Oh no! I should not have I should not have doubted them. I should not have doubted them. That was that was perfectly half popped. Wow. Wow. The simply sea salt so far, that's hard to say. So far, so far seems like it's the closest to the ones you dig out of the bottom of the popcorn bowl. I got two more left. This is the one that the one commenter on Facebook said didn't look very appealing. This is the black truffle and sea salt. There it is. I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't look much different. Hmm. That is a weird taste. Do I like that or not? I can't tell. 
I don't, probably not my first choice. I might have to agree in principle with the Facebook commenter that that's probably not the top one. That's a weird mixture of popcorn and truffles. This is the bag there's only one of in the sampler. Angry Kettle Corn, here we go. There it is, well, let's see. All right, here we go, let me try one. Okay. I'm not, I haven't got much heat yet, but I'm not, I'm not as into the flavor as some of the others. It is like hot kettle corn. It's not that hot. It's not, a, it's not unbearably hot. It's pretty good. If you like kettle corn, a little bit of heat, you'd probably like this one. I'm going to, I'm going to say though that my favorite was probably the Simply Sea Salt. It sounds very generic of me and I wouldn't have picked that as my favorite going into it. I would have probably gone with the caramel. Uh, the one I thought I would like the most, but I just think this one for whatever reason comes together the best So anyways, that's half pops. I think it's a pretty cool idea. I'm gonna be, I have a whole box of them now I have no affiliation with this company. They have no idea I'm posing this But if you do order from them, let them know that yeah, you heard it from me and maybe they'll Follow me on social media or something. <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time